people let your girl Adiola. As you guys know, I don't like talking about Oga, you know, you know, Uncle Dino Melai. I mean, I don't talk about him because there are so many important things to talk about. Hey, for example, right now, we don't have the president in Nigeria. As in, seriously, Mr. President is still abroad for medical treatment. Nigeria is presently presidentless. Tweet that out. I'm the first person to use that word. Nigeria presently presidentless. Can you imagine? When the president starts spending more time abroad than in his country, that ain't right. Something ain't right. Kudos to the vice president, Bodhi Bami or Simbajo. The man is doing really well, taking care of business while Ogabuari is uh, abroad for medical treatment. But please, Mr. President, Ogab, put the president. Please, Mr. President, Ogabuari, you are welcome to this show. Let me look in case you're watching. You know I'm on speed down. Eh? Your girl is on speed. I've been telling you all this. Call me. Call me if you think that you need to step down in order to take care of yourself. You can call me. We'll talk about it. Trust me. Nigerians will not say no. In fact, you will have their blessing. You have my blessing as well if you need to step down so you can feel better you know your health is more important to me me i don't care about uh -uh. health is worth health is more important so like i said i decided to focus on more important what is this i told you i'm not talking about dino melaye do i have to talk you are starting to like dino melaye what is your problem so let me talk okay if because of calling the world i think i have to talk about this but just briefly because you guys know i'm focusing more on more important issues as much as i'm trying to ignore uncle dino and focus on important news the man keeps putting himself in the news i don't know how sahara reporters got a recording of his conversation with a judge sahara I don't, those people they must be witch those sahara reporters they must be winch always witch hunting nigerian politicians so i don't know how sahara reporters got the recording of his conversation with a judge but he allegedly allegedly don't quote me he allegedly offered to bribe a judge uh, so i'll just um, look for a dinner in the week i'll keep talking to you I want me to tell you whatever you want to make, make it in uh, USD. Of course, of course, of course. Um, did she say USD? As in US dollars. US dollars, I mean. <laughs> Daniel Mantoda. So there was also another part of the conversation between the two of them where they said that Uncle Dino allegedly helped the woman's daughter to get a job. I hope Rapture will not take place before you come with me. <laughs> <laughs> I will come with you. So he said she is ready to start without me that she can come and see him and start immediately. And then after March, she will start getting paid. Definitely, yes. Yeah. But you know, as far as I'm concerned, this is not even, this is not news. I mean, bribing judges <laughs> since when? Using long legs to get jobs in Nigeria. That happens every day. I beg, I beg, that is not news. The only thing that is news to me, the only thing that shocked me was the fact that my uncle lied. As in, Senator Dido Melaye came out, well, he sent out a tweet and said that that was not his voice. Hey, father, father. On this show, this song belongs to like only like Mohammed. If I should play this song for you, ah, you have passed the boundary. Ah, everybody no, 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 no. I expected you to react. Okay, I knew you would react, but I thought you would come up with some kind of explanation that oh, it wasn't a bribe, that you were having a, a discussion about a contract. I was expecting you to come out with something like that, but for you to say that was not your voice, Uncle, you know, ah, no, 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 no. Especially when the madam, the judge, had confirmed that this thing happened, though, that people should do her jeje. Yeah, yeah. The judge allegedly confessed, and she is asking for mercy while you are telling us it's not your voice. In fact, the woman said Dino had reached out to her, telling her to deny it because he has connections at the top. I said for that. No, no, you disappointed, mama. Uh -uh. You disappointed, mama. I can't take anything, Uncle Dino, but lies. No, 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 baby. It. You don't have to play it again. They had it the first time. Anyway, next time, Uncle Dino Melai, just call me. You know, Adiola, or oh girl, you know, what's up, what's up, Ben? My dear, don't call me your dear. I'm not, I'm not your dear. I'm not your dear, oh Jerry. But you can say, Adiola, how do I get out of this? And, and we will talk about it. But for you to, why did you put up my photo with uh, Dino Melai? Did I ask you? Did I send you? There are some people we don't put up a uh, photo. No, not on that. Take it down. Take it down. Anyway, I've met this man before. So for you, to tell me that was not your voice that was exactly the same voice with which you greeted me that day 
And you talked about how we are doing a good job on this show. You know that day that we met Uncle Dino, you were commenting, keeping it real. Me and Colin, oh, what's up, Colin? Oh, he knows you, he knows you. So that was the same voice that I heard. So now this is news to me. Uncle Dino hearing that was not your voice. Anyway, what do I know? I want to know what you guys think. Back to important issues. Like I said, did you get Mr. President? I've been telling this boy to try Mr. President on speed to call him, you know, so we can know how he's doing. Did you get you? Of course not. You didn't get Mr. President. Oh, my name. Oh, my name. You don't have long leg. You don't know people. This is why I've been telling you never to make fun of Femi Adeshina or Gabashi. You know, you could have called them by now. They would have connected you with London to speak with Mr. President. You see your life. Anyway, as I was saying, somebody has to give us some kind of update on Mr. President. You know, we cannot continue like this. We need some kind of update on exactly what is going on with Mr. President. It is just so that we can know how to pray. So you understand, we are always praying for our president. Meanwhile, there was drama in Lagos last week when the presiding chaplain of, uh, they call it the Chapel of Christ the Light in Alausa, was fired and given 24 hours for him and his family to pack their load. Now, the church is under the control of Lagos State and it's being managed by the office of the governor's wife. At first, we heard that uh, the madam, as in the first lady of Lagos, was at an anointing service and that she expected to be anointed first. You know these are big people. In Nigeria, you know they have to always come first. I mean, this is what I tell Paul all the time, that I'm supposed to come first. This guy, he just makes fun of me. No respect, no respect. Anyway, um, the priest, instead of anointing Madame first, if really she was expecting to be anointed first, the man decided to anoint common people, as in ordinary people, people that are not governor's wife, people that are not governors. Can you imagine how disrespectful? What's up? What up? How dare you anoint somebody that is not a governor's wife when a governor's wife is sitting down in the same sauce in church? Did I? In the same church. So the story says that Madame had to wait in line. Father, you make a governor's wife wait in line? Ah! <laughs> that is the height of disrespect in Nigeria. And as soon as she was anointed, we heard that uh, she stormed out of the church. There are a lot of people followed her, begging her, Madame, what happened? Whatever, she didn't see anything. All we know is that the next day, the chaplain got his uh, sack letter that he needs to vacate him and his family. So everybody has been crucifying Madame for being prideful and then the drama got even better when Khan, the Christian Association of Nigeria came out after some days they said that they are in support of the removal of the priest I said tell me something <laughs> something. Khan said that the chaplain had a lot of sins. As in, they said he had broken several regulations. They said that this has nothing to do with the fact that Madame was not anointed first. So according to the Christian Association of Nigeria, they said that one of his many sins was going to see the governor's wife in February without being invited and without the church council knowing about it. They said that he went there and told the woman that it was the church council that sent him. So they said the man of God lied and that that when he got there, he told the first lady of Lagos State that she must respect his office and that he has to be her husband's spiritual guide, as in Governor Ambode's spiritual guide, and also that the small church inside the state house should also be reporting to him. If not, he would withdraw some staff. Now, according to Khan, the pastor wrote an apology letter after that incident. This was in March. Apparently, he went to see the first lady in February. They also said that he's been using the church's bus for his personal commute. So, according to the Christian Association of Nigeria, the man of God has a lot of queries. So, what do you guys think? I want to know what you guys <laughs> what do you guys think about this drama? Because seriously, despite all these queries, the boss going to whatever they said he did, what I still don't understand is why the man was fired the day after the anointing service where Madame allegedly stormed out in uh, anger. So I honestly hope to God that this woman was not truly hoping to be anointed first because that was Fantastic! Because I just cannot wrap my mind around the thought of some people expecting special treatment in the house, in the house of God, who? In the house of God, hello? Shallow somebody. I mean, <laughs> and you guys know we do that in Nigeria. They do it in Nigeria, I should say. Eh? The front row is usually for the rich and the politicians and the big men of God with big titles. You will see the big gilly of their madams as well. I just want to hear from you guys. <laughs> Should there be preferential treatment for some people in the house of God? And um, is that how it was during Jesus' time when he was here? Was that how Jesus operated? I just would like to know. And also, what is it like in your church? Are some people giving preferential treatment in your church? I'd like to hear from you guys because who? Father! Father in heaven, there is no male, 
not female, not rich, not poor, not nobody. Just believe that she you understand. I don't think God sees somebody as president or somebody as a governor. Sorry. I'm just saying, when we get to heaven, everybody will be equal. Jokes aside, I like to know what you guys think. You guys not do not much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. About two weeks ago, more than 250 African migrants drowned in the Mediterranean Sea. Again, this is not the first. We've been talking about this for God knows how long. That was last week, Thursday. And then about a week after that, at least 44 migrants, including women and babies, were found dead. Apparently, they died of thirst after their vehicle broke down in the desert. That is in northern Niger. These people were on their way to Libya hoping to go from Libya to Europe. Uh, these are people from Gambia, from Guinea, Nigeria. I'm telling you the rate at which Africans are dying in the Mediterranean Sea and in the desert is not only alarming but heartbreaking and you just can't help but wonder why people keep risking their lives despite the fact that all these things are in the news. Please, my brothers and sisters, if you want to go abroad, apply for a visa. If one country denies you, try another one. Going by road is not only risky, but thousands of people have died, and you don't have to be one of them, please. But you guys don't know much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. And moving on to Burundi, now the government of Burundi has announced that any unmarried couple living together must get married before the end of this year by fire by force. Go and get married. <laughs> The government has announced go and get married. They said this is in order to reform morals in the country. The government of Burundi said this is a way of putting an end to immorality, you know? <laughs> this is good calling the world. Like I've been saying, you are not a Kenyan girl, you know? You guys, I need to send you to Burundi. Get married. The government believes that if all couples get married, that it will put an end to illegal marriages, polygamy, bigamy, and hundreds of schoolgirls getting pregnant. Amen, somebody. Amen, somebody. Okay. So you really think if couples get married, there will be no more polygamy and school children will no longer get pregnant? <laughs> who, who comes up with this crap? I'm sorry. I want to know. I want to know what you guys think. Do you really think telling people to get married will put an end to teenage pregnancy and uh, bigamy, polygamy? I want to know what you guys think about this story, but you guys not know much. Guess what? I'm just giving it real. And lastly, in Kenya, Fanta, Fanta. Ah, you know, I've not slept in a whole week. Do you guys know they just opened some new train stations in Kenya, linking Nairobi with the city of Mombasa. Yeah, the train travels 472 kilometers. That is like 293 miles. And can you believe that this whole thing, the train, the train stations, it cost $3.2 billion. Father, how much did we spend on our trains in Nigeria? Hmm? You see why I have not slept? I haven't slept, I haven't eaten, I didn't drink anything. I, I mean, look at our train stations and our trains. Actually, their own train in Kenya is, is not all that either. <laughs> <laughs> Their train in Kenya is not special either. But the train station, the train station in Kenya looks nicer than our international airport. Where is this though? The standard gauge railway, which covers the Mombasa Nairobi route in 472 kilometers, the first phase of the standard gauge railway has two major stations, seven intermediate stations, and 23 passing stations. Did you see a train station in Kenya? Father, father, this is a train station. Ah, Lord Jesus. Why, father, why, why, why? Eh? Didn't we spend 12 billion dollars one time like this? There was one time we spent 12 billion. We, I mean, we spent a lot of money, okay? This was only 3.2 billion. So the plan in Kenya now is that the train will link Kenya with Uganda, with Rwanda, South Sudan, Burundi, and Ethiopia. They got plans. They have vision. These people are trying to link with neighboring countries. Where are we linking to? We are not linking anyway. Okay. Anyway, so when this came out, a lot of Kenyans have been upset that the government stole a lot of money in the name of building train. Me, I'm like, at least you have something to show for it. I want to know what you guys think. Kenyans are complaining that the government stole money that with 3.2 billion, they should have produced better stations and better trains. I agree on the trains, the, those trains. Their train in Kenya is not special either. <laughs> it's just, 
Anyway, but you know, we were really short change in Nigeria. Abba, they robbed us. I mean, point blank. They were pointing a gun on our faces in Nigeria as they were robbing us of the money that they said they spent allegedly on the trains. Eh, when we look at the trains today. Meanwhile, Kenyans are saying that we should go and look at the trains in Ethiopia. That their own train should be like that of Ethiopia. And we in Nigeria, we're looking at the trains in Kenya. Let me know what you guys think. I'm very happy to see this development in different parts of Africa, but Niger, Nigeria, please stop calling yourself the giant of Africa. <laughs> If this is the kind of trains and the kind of train stations that you will be giving us, eh? Stop calling yourself the giant so jare. You guys not know much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. Growing up in Kenya, my sister and I were very close. But like any sisters, we fought a lot. She always got new clothes and I always got hand-me-downs. Now she's putting her children through school in Kenya. We still fight sometimes, especially when I send money for the kids. I tell her, buy some clothes for the younger one, and we both laugh. With nearly 500,000 locations, our app and online, this is moving money for better. All right, y'all, it's been real, and I'm keeping it real right up in here. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Until next week, I'm going to see y'all later. Peace out.